you know, saying our scriptures, but let, let's think about what just was said for a moment. Thank you, Jesus. Catch, catch this here. If, if y'all open up that word. When he's saying, set your mind, set our, your mind. You know how like y'all set an alarm clock? Boom. Some of y'all set alarm clocks. I don't know. Some of y'all set it and then y'all just keep hitting it. <laughs> Hit it about five times. Y'all do that with y'all phones? Y'all hear it and be like, or y'all put it 15, 30 minutes earlier knowing that you're going to wake up literally exactly on time, not early. Amen. But God is saying, set your mind on the realities of heaven. It's like we have a life where we always are seeing in our carnal lens with your eyes. But God wants you to start perceiving what's happening here on this planet and saying, hey, this is not the final product. This is not the final thing. You understand? We have a lot of things we set our mind. We look at our calendars. We look at our schedules. And we got to say, I got to put this date together. I got to put that date together. And God is saying, wait, 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 wait a second. Set your mind on what? The fake things? The realities of heaven. The realities. It's a reality that you are seated in heavenly places. By why? Why? Christ Jesus. Because you're in Christ Jesus, you are seated in heavenly places. You have access to God's throne. Do you guys understand what that means? I know we're representatives here, and sometimes we can get clouded by distractions, amen? Things that are happening. We're in this carnal body. Like I said, we get moody, and we got to literally fight against this thing that tells us, hey, do what I want you to do, not what God is telling you to do, mm -hmm. amen? And we got to get into that. But God is saying that if you really want to know your true identity, your true identity is hidden in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. I want to say that one more time because I know we, what do you call, can you open it up just for a second? I want to say that one more time for you guys. One more time. Colossians 3. Just open it up. Colossians 3. Because God wants to drive this literally down. He's saying Colossians 3 1 says, since you have been raised to new life with Christ, do you not know you've been risen to a new life? It's really a new life. It's not the old life. I know you got the memories of your past. I know you got the memories when you was in the club, when you was doing this, when you was doing that. I know you got the memories. Some of us still got some photos and footage. Amen. I tried to see an old photo of mine of me and her, and I had like a drink. I was just like, get rid of that. Burn that thing. <laughs> All the Christmas parties we used to just do the most, you know. I didn't even know. I was like, ooh, we still holding it on to all the all the things. I can even see it in my eyes. I'm like, I'm not the same person. Amen. I ain't that same person. And God is trying to set this reality. He said, it already happened, guys. You're actually walking in the resurrected life right now. But this is the beautiful thing that God did. He did it from the inside out. Mm -hmm. So instead of everybody just seeing, you know, the glowing, radiant side of you, <laughs> you got to get into Christ. You got to remind yourself and say, hey, something actually did change. I actually was transformed. I actually was born again. Right? This is not just a superficial thing, but God is trying to get us to grow from the inside out. Amen. That's why he Amen. says, your outer man, your physical body should be perishing, but your inner man is what? Being renewed daily. Mm -hmm. It says, set your sights on the reality of realities of heaven it's not an imagination it's a reality guys it says where christ sits in the place of honor at god's right hand think about the things of heaven not the things of earth what are you thinking about all the time what's consuming your mind i know they be joking with me all the time that can we get a break <laughs> you you always on ministry you always on i'm like no i'm just 24 7 trying to be plugged in like, you talk about a frequency? I'm literally always trying to be tuned in. Heaven station. Like, if you hear the fuzz, if I get too, too way out, I could be in a little worldly element. You know when you guys drive and you hear, like, a little little, little area you go in, you go like, oh, this station don't work anymore, you know? See, with the Holy Ghost, it should be on all the time. You shouldn't be turning, you know? But you're going to be starting going in certain areas, you know, and then it gets all fuzzy. Because you're listening to carnality. You listen to the station of carnality. 
or tells you, ah, you're doing too much. You don't need that much church. You don't need to see the people that much. Man, it's crazy. You know, people say it all the time. The moment, I'm telling you right now, I'll, I'll preach it to the end of the, the moment my wife and I started going to church more than once a week, everybody said, you in a cult. You in a cult, brother. This is a cult. And I was just like, you know, the root word of cult means culture. <laughs> I was like, you find out that people are in their sports and all their other organizations that they worship, and you trying to tell me y'all ain't in a cult? Mm -hmm. Come on. Most of the people, are, you are adopted and you have surrendered to some type of culture, whether you know it or not. Amen. And people try to play that stuff because Satan wants to get that deceptive thought and make you what? Get your eyes off of Jesus. Get your eyes off the realities of who you really are. And we're going to go through that today because this is key, guys. If any scripture I want you all to hold on to today, hold on and grasp this one. He says, three, for you died to this life. Did you die to this life? And what I mean by a guy is y'all can't be like Lot's wife. Y'all can't be looking in the past saying, man, what's behind me was greater than what's in front of me. No. Should never be that way. You should say, you know what? I don't care if I don't know what's in front of me, but I know that that's the direction God wants. Amen. And if God has that direction for me, I'm going to press towards the mark to that high calling in Christ Jesus, and I'm going to fulfill the mission that God has called me to live and be. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all should be rejoicing off of that one right there. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Now here's the last part. It says, and when Christ, who is your life, which we need to make sure Christ is your life, not your life is your life, Christ is your life. Like when people say, love is love. No, God is love. Amen? <laughs> love is not love. God is love. I'm going to shout it now to the rooftops to it resonates all throughout humanity. God is love. And the Bible says here, Christ is your life. Now, your life is your life. Christ is really your real life. He says, is revealed to the whole world. You will what? Everyone say share. Share. I will, I will. Share, share in all, in all. Of, his glory. of his glory. Catch that out, guys. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing and doing of his word. Can we all stand to our